Look at you all grown up. Got your little speed bumps and everything. Free Bia, free Bia. I have the soundtrack to this movie because I loved this song so much. Really, Jean? I had to leave early because I was crying so hard I had to call my mom. Hey, Team Duff, it's Wit. Thanks so much for listening to Duff Enough, the ultimate Hillary Duff fan podcast. This show is a celebration of the life and career of actress, singer, mother, and all-around icon, Hilary Duff. And welcoming to the show now, a super Hillary fan. Her name is Natalie Town. Hey, Natalie, welcome to Duff Enough. Hi, thank you for having me. Absolutely. So excited to have you on to talk about The Perfect Man. Okay, we got to start by talking a little bit about your Hillary fandom. And I do have three questions that I'll ask you. But just, you know, a little bit about your Hillary history. Have you been a lifelong fan? Oh my gosh, yes, I have been a lifelong fan. It's crazy to think I'm pretty sure I was only seven or eight when Lizzie came out, and I just don't feel like I was that young, but just proves that I've been a fan for essentially my whole life almost, because I'm 26 now. Yeah, I I was six when uh, Lizzie premiered, so same here, same here. Yes, have you ever met her or anything like that? I have. Um, I actually met her the first time in New York at um, a single release party for Chasing the Sun. Oh my gosh, you were there for that. I was there, and I, I had to leave early because I was crying so hard I had to call my mom. Oh my gosh. Please <laughs> um, tell me everything. Well, she was just so she was so incredibly sweet for his fall, but I had luckily just turned 21. I was glad that I had turned 21 or else I wouldn't have been able to go. I was 21 and up I was at this club and I couldn't find anyone to go with me because I had only lived in New York for the summer. So I didn't have a ton of friends. Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to the club by myself. Just turned 21. I don't need anybody else. So I went to the club and kept waiting for her to come out, but it was getting later and I was in an unfamiliar area and I was like, maybe I should call a cab and go home. Mind you, this is like before Uber was a big thing. So I would have to have called a cab or taken the train. And then all of a sudden she came out on the balcony and people were running up the stairs. They wanted to meet her. They wanted to see her. And I couldn't decide if I should run up the stairs, if I should stay by the stage and save my spot. That was like super good. But I was like, you know what? I'm going for it. I'm running up the stairs. Security tried to stop me, but I slipped past them. Luckily, made quite a scene. And she was taking pictures with everybody that was surrounding her VIP section. And then she sat for a moment and I figured she was kind of done because she of course wanted to celebrate with her friends and family. And then she just made a beeline towards me. It's like some force between us. I don't know. She like knew that I just needed to meet her. And she came over and I almost started crying and told her this was the dream come true. And she just held my hands and they were shaking. And I asked her to take a photo with me and I couldn't even hold my phone. So she took my phone and took the pictures for us and was just the sweetest peach. And I was shaking and crying. I had to leave and call my mom. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I love it. (laughs) It was amazing. Yes. One day I'm going to meet her and I'm going to have my moment like that. But I have another guest who's been on the show who was also at the the Chasing the Sun uh, premiere. And you have a very similar story. So I love that. Oh, that's funny. (laughs) Jumping into the three questions here. So first question, what is your favorite Hilary Duff movie? I feel like I can truly only narrow it down to four, but I will give you just one. And I'm just going to go with the classic of a Cinderella story. I loved Raise Your Voice and The Perfect Man too, and of course, the McGuire movie. But I think a Cinderella story is just stuck with my brain for so long, especially once I went to all the filming locations and the high school and the house they lived in and the lookout point that she goes through with her dad and with Chad Michael Murray in the end. Um, So I just feel like that one's been the most relevant in my life all these years. Fantastic choice. Yeah. Next question. What is your favorite Hilary Duff song? I feel like I'm such a nostalgic person, so I have to go with So Yesterday. It just every time I hear it, it takes me back to like being that little girl that just loved her so much. I mean, I love her today too, but that's when you know you idolized her and we all wanted to be just like her and we wanted to pursue all these dreams. So definitely So Yesterday. I always loved Gypsy Woman. I thought that one was so cool. Play With Fire I still makes me feel like such a cool cat when I listen to it. And I loved I Can't Wait. I'm pretty sure that was her first ever song. Yeah. And then I love the whole Breathe In, Breathe Out album. I just felt like I could relate to it a lot being an adult. And that's when I had first moved to L.A. So that album is like the soundtrack to my first year in Los Angeles, which is just like works out so perfectly. Oh, my goodness. Yes. I love it. And I love like talking to like a mega fan like you because – we get Dignity songs mentioned, and not everyone yes. knows those songs. So Right, right. Yeah, that, I remember when she went on that tour, she didn't come to Michigan, and I was sad. Um, so I never saw that one live, but all the rest of them I saw live. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> and the last question here to test your Hillary uh, fandom, what is your favorite episode of Lizzie McGuire? Oh, 
Uh, this one, I wouldn't say it's a little dark. It's just a little more serious. I think it just stuck with me through just the, during the time that that show was on was sort of aligning with my life because I was getting into the end of elementary school going into middle school. And um, when Miranda has an eating disorder, it right. just was so serious. I feel like for a Disney show, and I don't think they get that serious anymore. So when they talk about Liz McGuire having such real life lessons – that episode is so true to what people say because they talked about real stuff that a lot of young teenage girls go through and young teenage boys go through, not liking your body, not having any confidence. And Lizzie's the one who kind of picks her back up and is there for her friend. And just like, it's almost more like a 90210 episode or something. <laughs> yeah. So that episode is called Inner Beauty. And Miranda, well, Lelaine was just on Christy Carlson Romano's cooking show on YouTube and talked about that episode and brought that up, which I, I loved. So That's cool. That, like, it stuck out to her, too. Yeah. I also love the one when she has the boyfriend and Miranda doesn't. And she's like, well, it's because you don't have a boyfriend. You don't understand. And I, I don't mm-hmm. remember exactly what she says, but I remember that one being so dramatic, too. Season two. Season two got dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. Sit back, relax, and enjoy our silver screen queen. It's time for Block Duffster. The Perfect Man is what we're going to be talking about for this episode. And I'm curious, you know, you said that was one of your your top four. So was this like one of your faves? It was. Yeah, it was definitely in the top fours. I think when she started to get a little bit older and do more serious roles, I suppose, and it started to make a little more sense with my life. And it was funny watching it back. I just watched it today again. I I didn't realize like how much of a lesson there is in it and how much she's going through and she's kind of damaged from her mom and it was a very serious movie that I think my, I remember my mom took me to see it. My mom took me to see all the Hillary Duff movies. So I feel like my mom probably enjoyed it too. Cause Heather Locklear and you know, um, the guy from sex in the city. So it was kind of like one of her more adult movies. Yeah. So this movie came out on my sisters. I have two sisters and their twins, but it came out on their birthday, uh, June 17th, 2005. And I remember like coming out with this big plan, like we're going to go see this movie on their birthday with them and they'll want to see it. And it's Hillary Duff's new movie. And this is going to be great. But it's funny because they're a good, like they're 12 years older than me. So looking back on it now, I'm sure they didn't like, they probably were interested, but it probably wasn't what they wanted to do on their birthday. One of them wound up going. Uh, we wound up taking her to see it. And on the release day, on her birthday, whether that's what she wanted to do or not. And I was like totally stoked and thought this was the perfect thing ever. But, you know, new Hillary Duff movie. And to be fair, like this is a solid romantic comedy, I feel like. So she may have enjoyed it. Yeah, I would have enjoyed it. But I can see maybe it fe- seeming like a little bit too young, especially if you're not like a fanatic fan. Right, right. Some more info about the movie. This was a Universal Pictures movie. Susan Duff was actually a producer on it. So shout out to Suze. Yeah, Mama Boss. Mama Boss, absolutely. It opened at number eight in the U.S. And that doesn't sound great, but $5.3 million. It wound up worldwide $19.7 million. So it was a big hit. It really was. It only had a $10 million budget. <sighs> Unfortunately, Hillary did get a Razzie nomination for this, along with Cheaper by the Dozen 2 for Worst Actress, which I'm like, go on, whatever. <laughs> That's so mean. I didn't. I don't think I knew that, and I would have to disagree, of course. I really like Hillary in this role of Holly, and a lot of her roles are similar, but there's always something different. And for me, Holly stands out because Holly's kind of a tough girl, you know, and we don't see that much from Hillary. You know, her roles are usually either not so confident or, you know, kind of shy, you know, with raise your voice. And this was a girl who was tough and knew what she wanted, and she went after it, and I, I love that. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree. I was one of my favorite parts is when she's running up and down the fire escape, like trying to get the orchid to her mom. And it just, yeah, proved she had like such a plan and she didn't care what anybody had to say about it. She felt like that's what was best for her and her family at the time. This was like somebody who had been through some stuff and was just trying to tough it out. Yeah, her mom really put her through it. I mean, man. When you really think about it, like now growing up, it's like that would have been really, really hard. And you're like in your teen years and you don't have any friends and you're moving from place to place. That would be really frustrating. Just to address the overall plot here, this is about a young girl whose mom tends to move away whenever a relationship with a guy goes bad. So her mom is a single mom raising two daughters and Hillary plays the teenage daughter and Heather Locklear plays the mom. And I'll run down the cast here. So Hillary is Holly Hamilton. We have Heather Locklear as Jean. And we we know Heather from Melrose Place. She was huge uh, back in the day, uh, early 90s and all that. 
Aria Wallace as Zoe, and I thought she was super charming in this movie, The Little Sister. Ben Feldman as Adam, Hillary's character's love interest, and he is now well known for the show Superstore, Mad Men. Chris Noth as Ben, he's from Sex and the City. Michael Malley as Lenny, we later saw him in Glee uh, as Kurt's dad. We have Vanessa Lingies as Amy. Holly's best friend, or Holly's new friend that she meets in the movie, and then Caroline Ray as Gloria. We know her from Sabrina, the Teenage Witch, and Kim Whitley as Dolores, very popular comedian. And then finally, the last notable name I wrote down here, Carson Kressley uh, plays a character in this movie named Lance, and he, of course, was uh, from Queer Eye, the original Queer Eye. And I have to say, I actually was working on a TV show and got to, like, sort of meet Carson Kressley. I went and got his lunch for him and all that, so anyway. Oh, cool. That's so funny. But that's the cast. The director of this movie is Mark Rosman. He was also the director for A Cinderella Story. So kind of keeping it in the in the fam there a little mm-hmm. bit, I guess. But, but yeah, starting at the beginning. So we see Holly at a home with her mom. And her mom has broken up with this guy at the very beginning of the movie. And um, Holly's actually trying on a red dress for a dance, which will come back around full circle later in the movie. But One thing I made a note of at the beginning was her mom is playing Patsy Cline music, and she says Patsy's back, and that means it's moving time. And I had never picked up on that before. Oh, yeah. I didn't even pick up on that today, so thank you. Yeah. So Holly's mom, Jean, breaks up with this guy. They're going to move to Brooklyn, New York. She's not going to get to go to that dance. And Holly, we just learn, is so used to this, and she's barely faced by it. It's kind of like, it's time to move. We find out she has this blog called Girl on the Move. And you're a blogger, right? I saw. Yes, I am, which is like so funny when I watched this movie back. It was like, I wonder if somewhere deep inside some of that inspiration came from this movie because I just loved her so much. And you should definitely plug your blog. Oh, my blog is Coffee with Natalie. And yeah, I just talk about traveling and um, I actually tell my Hillary story in there of the first time that I met her. And uh, yeah, so Coffee with Natalie, check it out. I'm having like a weird moment where I feel like I've read. So you wrote an article about when you went to Chasing the Sun. I feel like I read that article or that blog post. You may have. I wrote it a long time ago, a long time ago, 2014. Right. That was the summer I was in New York and the summer of that release party. I wrote it shortly after I got back, maybe around Christmas time. And it kind of went viral. Um amongst like Hillary fans. I did read that. That's funny. And then I just copy and pasted it onto like my new professional blog because it was from like a Wix site that I did. So you probably have read it. I have. I loved that. It was very well written. I do remember. Oh my gosh. Yes. Thank you. My goal was for her to eventually catch wind of it. I don't know if she ever did, but I was just trying to get like all the Hillary fan sites to repost it and retweet it and hopefully she would see it um but i'm glad you did that's so funny well and i will put your social media links and stuff in the description so people can find that i'll try to find that post and put it in there too so yeah so back to the beginning of the movie what do you think about holly when we first meet her here one of the notes i made was like oh whoa we went very dark with the eyeliner in this movie Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah she just seemed more of like a closed off tough girl just doesn't really like have a lot of friends is it super sociable and it's just kind of like you know moving from stage to stage of her life and definitely like this you funny you said the dark eyeliner thing because i was watching the beginning of it with my boyfriend and he was like whoa heavy on the eyeliner like punk hillary and so he noticed that too yeah yeah so they moved to brooklyn and we see holly go to school and it's a new school for her she's totally used to this the first friend that she kind of meets is a girl named amy and i remember thinking this was a little scandalous as a kid but amy's like oh you're like you have virgin skin no piercings and no tattoos and like amy like pulls down her pants a little bit to show her her tattoo and i'm like whoa but i love amy yeah i did too i just always thought she was like really cool and really funky and i kind of feel like i remember wanting to be sort of like her i don't know why but i just she always stuck out to me as like one of the one of her cooler co-stars yeah and now hillary is like full of tattoos so right right yes and i do love them me too the next character here that we meet who will become her friend slash love interest is a guy named Adam, and she actually sits in his assigned seat. And talking about, you know, the tougher side here and kind of that thick skin of Holly's character, he says, that's my seat. And she's like, are there assigned seats here or something? And he's like, if I don't like sitting up the front, and she's like, neither do I. She like stood her ground and stayed in that seat. So spoke to the character I felt like there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's that part always sticks out to me too. And I just like immediately had such a crush on him. I just have always thought he's so cute. 
So good for her. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about Jean's story for a second. Jean is going to work at this bakery. You know, she seems to make friends with her coworkers pretty quick. And I mentioned they're played by uh, Carolyn Ray and Kim Whitley. And I wrote down a line that Kim Whitley said to Holly because Hillary Hillary's character comes to the to the bakery, mm-hmm. and she says, "Look at you, all grown up, got your little speed bumps and everything." And I was just like, "Whoa!" <laughs> the thing that kind of struck me about that is because there was so much of Lizzie McGuire where it was just like, "I want a bra" and all this, and so I was like, "Oh my goodness, look at Hillary, all grown up here, sort of." I know, seriously. And then I feel like she just has continued to become just curvilicious. That was just the beginning of of her being a woman. Yeah. Absolutely. And I didn't talk too much about where this movie kind of falls in the Hillary timeline, but she was definitely, you know, shooting it during the time of recording for her self-titled album. And this movie came out in between the the first Most Wanted tour and the second Most Wanted tour and kind of the wake up era is where this yeah. came out. And, um, and so they shot it kind of before Hillary had that like very skinny phase and Mm -hmm. the teeth (laughs) Um, yeah (laughs) she looks great in this movie though I feel like for sure oh I was thinking that too actually while I was watching it I was like I think she looks like nice and thick in like a good way in a healthy way and I was thinking you know this was probably pre getting very very thin and it was just like such a prime time for her Mm -hmm. and I mean it's like she was doing so much all at one time and as fans you don't realize it because things come out one at a time, whereas like she's recording an album and preparing for tour and working on a movie and I'm just and you're like 16, 17, 18 years old during these times and it was such a time to be thin and quote unquote perfect at that time and I just can't even imagine the pressure. Right. Yeah, for sure. And I love that she's opened up about it more so in recent years because yeah, we wouldn't have like I don't remember that being a part of the conversation back then for sure. So Right. Okay. Then we meet Lenny, which, bless him, honestly, like, (laughs) man, this guy. He means well, yeah. Yeah. So you want to talk a little bit about the first impression that he makes? I wrote down the the pickup line. The pickup line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it hurt when she fell from heaven, because he was pretty sure she was an angel, and Holly just rolls her eyes, and it's like, okay, yeah, as if. Yeah, I know, which I'm just like, that's the worst line, but of course he says it. This is not Jean's guy. Holly is not here for... Uh, this guy to be her her mom's new man. And then I made a note about how uh, Jean wants Holly to help her put a photo of herself on Match.com. So clearly, <laughs> clearly this is pre like Tinder and all that. So a different time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. The parents meeting at school is another, I think, highlight for the movie. And it's so embarrassing. But Holly and her mom go there and and Jean stands up and asks a question and she eventually gets to the the point of can they have monthly mixers for single parents because single parents have different priorities. And she's talking about she's like, I really need to meet a good man. And everyone starts laughing, like all of Holly's peers at the school, the people that she's met and all the parents and whatnot. And, you know, Holly was a little upset with with Jean afterward, which very fair for sure. Um, And she was just like, you made that about you. And the point of the meeting was for the kids. And I was like, yes, Holly, you tell her. Yeah, I would have been so humiliated. And I I love Heather Locklear. And I I love the whole concept of the movie. But she is very selfish in the beginning. And I'm sure it just would have been like really hard to be her kid at that point in time. Absolutely. Absolutely. The next day at school, Adam actually comes up to Holly and he's like, do you know what everyone's talking about this morning? And, you know, she's thinking that he's going to make fun of her for what happened at the meeting and he's like a Krispy Kreme truck turned over on 8th Avenue or something and I was like oh that's so sweet and then he pulls out a donut and that comes into play later in the movie kind of like the dress so we'll we'll get to that there but but I thought that was sweet and like kind of broke the ice between them a little bit prior or after that scene that they had uh, where things didn't get off on the a great start for them in the classroom But, but yeah we meet Chris Noth's character here named Ben when Amy takes Holly to her uncle's restaurant. And her uncle is Ben, Chris Noth, and it's the River Bistro restaurant. Very fancy. Ooh. <laughs> and we find out that Ben is like a ladies' man and he knows about females. And we also see Carson Kressley's character, Lance, come by and he's like, he knows more about females than I know about females, which I love. Like, I love Carson Kressley in this movie. Yes, he's so good. Yes. And the first thing that Ben kind of talks about, well, he's talking on the phone. He's like, flowers always work. And Holly picks up on this and the wheels are starting to turn in her head about, hmm, you know, what's going on here or what to do with this information. And 
so she comes up with this idea after talking to Ben, and he tells her actually that orchids are like the best flower to give to a, a woman. So Holly's going to give her mom flowers from the perfect man, and she's going to make up this guy because she wants her mom not to feel desperate, and she wants to put an end to this cycle, which I think is totally fair. Like, Holly definitely deserves to be fed up with how her life has gone at this point. She gets Amy to, like, ring the doorbell or hit the buzzer on the apartment, and she's trying to um, get her mom to go out and get the orchid, and there's going to be a note from a secret admirer. But things keep happening, and the mom is not paying attention. Like, her mom is doing the crossword puzzle, and then she's listening to music with the little sister. And Holly actually has to jump out the window two times and go and hit the buzzer and get the orchid back from this creepy old man who keeps stealing it from her porch. And I just love this scene so much because it's like a little bit of Hillary's physical comedy involved and it kind of speeds things up. They get some fun music going and then the mom finally comes downstairs and gets the orchid. And I just love this scene. Like it's definitely my favorite, one of my favorites in the movie. Yeah, same here. And I think it, like I didn't realize until watching it back today that it's so accurate for living in New York that this random person so quickly decided that they were just going to take these flowers with them and then has no shame in coming back after she she already took them away from him one time. Um, so yeah, it is really cute and funny and probably so much effort to crawl up and down that fire escape. So give her props. I know. And she had on some heels in that scene too. So. I know. That sets things in motion for Jean and the secret admirer situation. And so we'll see where that goes, of course. Back at school, we see that Adam has drawn a comic book picture that looks like Holly, but it's like this mythical woman, and she's on a horse, and Holly points it out. And another line I wrote here, actually, is kind of funny. So Adam talks about how um, his dad used to take him to comic book conventions, and his parents are divorced, and he's like, have you ever been? And Holly says, divorced? Not yet. Yeah, I love that one, too. That's so funny. All the things you keep bringing up are the parts that stood out to me, too, because it's such a clever line and such an adult line of her. I don't know. I just feel like that was such a period when she was really growing up and they were starting to give her more adult comedy, which I really like. Hopping back over to Jean's story, we see her keeping an eye out for her secret admirer, perfect man guy. And Lenny shows up and gives her a yellow rose. And one thing that was significant about that was because Ben had told Holly, that like a yellow rose is what you, you know, give to your grandmother or something like that. And an orchid is what you want to give to impress a woman. So I was like, oh, goodness, Lenny. Yeah, poor Lenny. He tried. (laughs) He did. He did. But he asks Jean to go to a Styx concert. And she says yes. Holly says it's impossible that Lenny is her perfect man, her secret admirer. Okay, we got to talk about this great exchange with Lenny and Holly where he gives her money to take Zoe to go see Bambi. I died at this. (laughs) I know. He's such a goober. That's like my only impression of him, I think. And Holly's like, I'm pretty sure that's not in theaters anymore. And pretty much just shames Bambi about how sad of a movie it is and why would she ever want to take her younger sister to go see that. And then her little sister's like, I'd love to go see that. And I want to jump in there and say the actual line, too, because she says, I'm dying to take my seven-year-old sister to a movie where the mom gets killed by the male hunter. And I was like, I love Holly right now. Yes, yes, me too. The Styx concert turns out to be a tribute band, and that whole thing is just super cringy. And I felt bad. That's one moment I felt bad for uh, Jean, because I was like, oh, poor thing. She comes home and she acts like she had a good time, you know, to kind of prove Holly wrong or something and I'm like no you had a terrible time right yeah you are not interested in him he asked you to take I love he like takes her down to his fancy quote-unquote fancy car and asks her to take her shoes off when she gets in and I'm just like oh my gosh like you don't even know how to impress impress a woman you're just like digging yourself deeper that don't impress me much is what I'm saying about that moment total Shania uh, moment there but meanwhile that night I think Holly like sent Zoe I think she took her to like Jean's coworker's house to be babysat or something. And she goes with Amy to talk to Ben about what to do next for the secret admirer situation. Now, mind you, Ben doesn't know about what's going on. They're acting like it's a school project or something. But it's at this point when Holly is given a CD by Ben with some happy music to play her mom. And we also find out that Ben is helping someone named Amber with a wedding. And Holly just assumes that Amber is his fiance at this point. So so that's important. Remember that. Right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Take note. A little note I made about Zoe. We find out that she wants to be in a spelling bee, but she's worried she won't be there in a couple of months to compete. And I felt like I felt for her, too, because it's just like, man, this mom has really like damaged these kids and 
And Holly talks about she's not a planner, and it's just like, ugh. Yeah, very sad. Very damaging. <laughs> the next scene is definitely my favorite scene in the whole movie, and it's when Jean gets her love letter with the CD, and they dance around the living room when they put it on, and it's a song called I Will Learn to Love Again by Casey Bataglia? I don't know. Something like that? I will say I have the soundtrack to this movie because I loved this song so much. Yes, I love this song too. And it is one of my favorite scenes of the movie too. It's just so so pure and sort of shows the the life that they could all have if their mom was just happy. And I love, you know, it starts out and it's Jean and Zoe are dancing and then they pull Hillary in. And I love when they're beside the window and they kind of do this uh, choreographed dance together. But it's just, it's so fun. Moving along here, the next part of the story The girls, Holly and Amy, take a picture of Amy's Uncle Ben, and they mail it with Gene's next letter. So now Gene has a face to a name. In the letter, he's saying that he's in China, and he's going to start emailing her. And the email was like, Brooklyn boy or something, which I I could not. Gene is emailing back and forth, and and she's starting to be happy, and she tells Lenny that she met someone else. And then we get to the point where she's going to have a party at the River Bistro, That's the restaurant where Ben is the owner of. And so Holly and Amy immediately are going to have to make sure Ben isn't there when Jean goes there. So so do you want to sort of talk about how that uh, situation unfolds? Um, So, yeah, Jean is going to, I believe it's a bridal shower for her friends at the bakery. And it happens to be, yes, at the River Bistro. What are the odds, of course? And because they had just sent the photo, you know, everything's going to fall apart. And so they have to sort of find this way to diverge them from seeing each other. And what I thought was so silly when they were starting to plan it is Holly's like, okay, Amy, you go to the restaurant and I'll go to your Uncle Ben's house and I'll make sure that he doesn't leave. And I'm just thinking, well, wouldn't it make more sense for Amy to go to her uncle's house rather than this like 17-year-old girl showing up at this like older man's apartment (laughs) to distract him? I thought the same thing. I was like, this is so inappropriate. Right. It's just like doesn't make any sense. But either way, I don't I didn't realize it until now. But I love the scene because she goes up to his apartment and she just starts rambling about all these possible teenage issues to keep him in the apartment. And I actually took those lines in that monologue and I performed that monologue when I used to do acting competitions. <laughs> really? Yeah, so that just like that scene has just always held a special piece of my heart. Um and I know it by heart to this day. So Oh, do it. Do it. Oh my gosh, I don't think that I could. I have to watch it while I'm watching it and then I know it by heart, but it's just like I, I love her part where she's like, um and I want to get a get a tattoo on my back, but it wouldn't really even be my back because it would be so low that you wouldn't be able to see it. And like she talks so fast and yeah, I, I love that. And I added some of my own lines to it to make it a little bit longer. And just, I, I think the tattoo part is my favorite part. Cause she's just on a roll and he's just staring at her like, oh my God, I don't, I don't know what to say. And I don't know why she's here. Yeah, no. And he's not even like a dad or anything. So he's an uncle, but yeah. Right, right. She's like, I don't have a dad and I need somebody to talk to. And, uh, you know, I want to get my nose pierced and, and nine other parts of my body, but my mom said she would kill me. So I want to get a tattoo. And then she's just like losing her marbles and he's losing his marbles. Yeah, I love it. Love it. He ends up getting a, a phone call because the pilot light isn't lighting on the oven. And so he has to go into the restaurant. And can I jump in there and say that line from Lance? Yes, please do. <laughs> So when Lance calls, he's like, the pilot light is out on that big thing that cooks the food, which I died because Lance is just not the the smartest. Yeah. I know. I remember him being my mom's favorite character, too, and her laughing out loud at all of his lines. So it's just like the perfect little one liners for that comedic relief. So then, they yeah, they end up having to go to the restaurant regardless. And Holly shows up and her mom sees her there. And she's like, what are you doing here? And she's like, oh, I I just missed you. And nothing's making any sense, honestly, at that point. Um, And she tells Amy, you have to create a distraction in the restaurant too. And so her solution is to tell the construction workers that there's free beer and appetizers. And I love her little like Brooklyn accent. She's like, free beer, free beer. (laughs) And they all come running in there for the free beer. And Lance is just having a field day over it. And you probably have the lines written down. So you should, you should say this part. Oh, yeah. So so the construction men come in and and Lance is serving them the beer and they're like, you're a Jets fan, right? And he says, oh, I live for West Side Story, which is just <laughs> amazing. Perfect. Yes. I laughed out loud and I think I remember my mom laughing out loud to that, too. And people probably not everybody would get that line, but it's a funny one. Yeah, I wouldn't have gotten it at that age just because I wasn't as familiar with West Side Story at like, you know, nine years old. But no, great line. Great line. In the moment of when they're trying to get everyone distracted and 
keeping them away from each other, Holly ends up setting off the fire alarm, which causes the sprinklers to go off and everybody has to rush out of the restaurant. And then that moment when everything goes into slow motion and she looks at her mom and she looks at Ben and everybody's panicking. It's like she realizes this could have been the moment that they could have met and they probably just should have met. And she created this whole lie of a mess and maybe kept her mom away from like this perfect person. Yeah. And to back up a little bit, I think that she realizes it when she goes to uncle Ben's apartment and sees that he does crossword puzzles and ink and he, he loves the moon and like realizes that he and her mom have a lot of similarities. Yep. No, absolutely. And there's an interesting pace to the movie. Like it never gets too slow, but there are definitely these moments where it's like, Oh, we're going to do this whole like action moment where stuff's going on. And, Holly's trying to keep this secret and then we'll kind of go back to things slowing down a little bit. But I never get bored in this movie, though. Yeah, no, I don't either. It definitely it's like the perfect length and it just keeps you interested. And I don't know, that's really like such a good turning point where then you start to get kind of sad for everybody. And Holly's sad. She just tried to help her mom, but she realized she made a mistake. And yeah. So after that whole thing goes down, Holly does think that Ben is her mom's perfect man. And Holly... Holly wants Adam to call her mom and break up with her as Ben because she's like, we have to end this now because there really is a perfect man for my mom and it's Ben and this is just getting too out of control. So Adam does, but he gets distracted by a picture of Holly on his computer. He starts saying romantic things to Jean on the phone and Holly actually pulls the the phone line out. And then the next day at school, Adam like kisses Holly and says he was distracted by her and Holly is just completely confused by that. I mean, she didn't see that coming, which I don't really know why, but I guess she's just never, you know, given herself enough time to get close to someone, which is really what Ben tells her later. Right. But but yeah, to like think, oh, a guy likes me? Like she just didn't catch on to that. So I wish I wish in the movie I'm realizing this now, like it seemed like so romantic when I was younger. I they didn't focus on their relationship too much. And I wish they had a little bit more. I wish like the stakes would have been a little bit higher between them because when he does kiss her, it just, it it a little bit does come out of nowhere. Like we know that he likes her based off of the things we've seen behind the scenes, but she's so distracted by her mom that you never really see like them interact or have any sort of chemistry. So I wish that they had highlighted that a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, I agree for sure. One of the next scenes is when Lenny comes back and he comes to, you know, Jean and Holly's apartment and he sings Lady by Styx and he climbs up the balcony and pulls out a ring and it's just, it's tragic. I mean, poor guy. And Jean, like, doesn't turn down his offer immediately. She's like, you know, she takes the ring and she's going to think about it. Really, Jean? Really? Um, And she says something about, like, you know, Ben is a beautiful idea, but you can't grow old with a beautiful idea. She may not say that at that point, but at some point in the movie she says that. Yeah. So then Holly, you know, kicks into action again and she like calls Jean and disguises her voice and is acting like she's Ben's handler or something and she's like meet me by the Brooklyn Bridge and all this stuff tomorrow and so we know that Jean is going to go to meet Ben. Holly now has to get the real Ben to go meet Jean. So Holly goes to find Ben and show him the emails uh, to explain everything. And it turns out he's at Amber's wedding. And it's at this point where Holly's like, oh, my goodness, he's about to get married to Amber. But she runs into the wedding and interrupts things. And she's like, you can't marry him. You know, talking about Amber. And Ben, it turns out, is just the caterer. He also, I think, was in the wedding. But whenever Holly explains, like, you know, you have to marry my mom and all this, like, Amber punches her groom which I was just like whoa and then Holly's like oh wait this is the wrong wedding sorry which I mean come on Holly this was a little bit more than like oops sorry you just ruined a wedding see you later yeah yeah (laughs) and then Ben like walks out and tries to figure out what's going on and Holly gives him the emails and then I actually love the next scene because we see Jean she's standing there waiting for Ben to show up. And we don't really know, like, is Ben going to show up? Did he read the emails? Is this going to have a happy moment here? But it's Holly, and she comes and confesses. And do you want to talk about how that goes down? Because it's 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 really good. I love the, the interaction there. It is. It's really sad. She just kind of comes and starts to explain the whole story to her mom. And her mom just keeps asking questions, you know, what about the emails and what about the phone call? And then she has to tell her, well, the phone call was my friend. And you can just tell she's just humiliated and then tells Holly that she's 
what she did was so cruel. And then Holly gets a bit defensive because she's just like, mom, I just wanted you to be happy. And this all came from a good place. And there might not be like a perfect man, that, but there's a perfect you. And I, and I love that moment when she says that, like this perfect you that's this happy and confident and fulfilled in her life is a real human being. And that's the person that you've become. And that's what I've given you. And even so, of course, I understand like in that moment, her mom is just humiliated and thinks that, oh, is this real life Ben? Is he laughing at me too? And she explains that he, he doesn't know and he wasn't a part of it. But either way, it it's definitely a humiliating moment and just, you know, your teenage daughter just kind of fooled you and tricked you and made you really vulnerable. And I don't know, I'm sure there was just a lot going through her head and it definitely, you know, the next few scenes shows the awkwardness between them and they're not speaking and yeah, really a sad moment. She was honest and I, I do think it was all good intentions, but it, it went too far. Yeah, no. And I think Hillary and Heather were great in this uh, scene for sure. Um, which they're great in the whole movie as a mother-daughter pair there. Yeah. I love the line that you mentioned about maybe the perfect man isn't real, but the perfect you is. And she's like, I want a mom who sees um, what Zoe and I see in you every day and who doesn't need a man to be whatever it is you're trying to be. You know, it's just, it's great. Love it. Love it. It's such a, yeah, it's such like a good lesson in what the whole film is supposed to be about, that yeah. these three young women can live a life together and be just as fulfilled you know without a man you know they pick each other up and support each other and love each other and that's all that they need yep as the movie kind of turns and wraps up here so holly holly actually gets a a drawing from adam and it shows her with a bunch of arms and you know it says you don't he says to her you don't let anyone get close enough to hurt you in the first place and holly is just immediately like hurt by that and then she goes home and she says i want to move and she's like we've moved so many times for you you know to jean and now she wants to move for her and so they start packing they're going to move to arizona adam actually brings by the picture and gives it to jean and says you know holly only saw one side of the drawing and so then we get to the moment where jean starts i aming adam and she's pretending to be holly so it's like a, a flip on the story here And at some point in this little conversation, Adam instant messages her, like, you want to end up like your mom? And that's when Jean kind of like, that's when it clicks for her almost. And it's like, I have not been setting the right example for my girls. And so Jean changes her mind. They're not going to move. And Holly is upset. They have another great moment. And Holly's like crying on her bed. And Jean says, when you run away, you end up avoiding yourself. And she's decided to set an example by sticking it out. And Jean also hands Holly Adam's picture and says, hey, there's another side. And we do see another side where Adam is actually like in the drawing as well. And he's like, I'll be there for you. So things kind of, you know, are taking a turn there. And then the movie definitely has a happy ending. I mean, this is where things start to come to a close. But we see that Ben reads Jean's emails. We see Jean give back Lenny's ring. Zoe gets to compete in the spelling bee contest. Jean wins a cake decorating contest and I think she gets a new job too because it looks like at the end she's in like a nicer bakery yeah yeah like a real bakery yeah Ben actually comes to see Jean at work and at first uh she says no when he asks her to go to dinner and then like she accepts which I was like yes I love it because I want them to be together yes and now she seems like she's in a good place to where it's like because she she turned down the offer because she's trying to like focus on herself and not do the dating thing but I think that she had come far enough now to where it's like, okay, you know, we're going to be okay. Like, and even, and I even feel like that relationship, she was going to go out on the date, but this wasn't going to be like before for many reasons. Like she wasn't desperate now. And then also like this guy might actually be the perfect man. So. Right. Right. Exactly. And yeah, I couldn't remember as I was watching it when she originally says no, I'm like, what? Does she really not end up saying yes to this date? And then yeah, as he walks out the door, she, she accepts. So I was happy. And then do you want to talk about how things end up for Holly? Sure. Yeah. Um, In the end, it's just sort of like you said earlier, full circle comes around and she's putting on her red dress that she wanted to wear in the beginning of the movie. And she's finally getting to go to a dance that she's never been able to have that opportunity before. And it ends up being Adam at the door who is taking her on the date. I don't know if this is their way of saying that they're together now or they're just starting out. And I've always been obsessed with that dress. And every time I see it, I'm obsessed with it again. I wish I would have had one just like it when I was in high school. And I love that Adam brings in a uh, Krispy Kreme box, again, wrapping back from the beginning. 
and she's confused as to why does he have this box of donuts with him? And he says, oh, you know, it, it crashed again and there's donuts everywhere. And she opens a box and it's her corsage for the dance. And I love when movies wrap around like that. She gets the dress, the Krispy Kreme and full circle. And, and Holly says, I, I no longer just have a home page and reference her blog. I have a home. And yes. I think she changes the name of her blog to Brooklyn Girl maybe or – um, I don't know if it says what she changes it to, but she's no longer moving around. Yeah, yeah. No, and I love we kind of get that little narration at the end where it's we're hearing what she wrote on the blog. And yeah, no, it's a very happy it's a very happy ending. And the movie, it's just it's super feel good. Like this is and I was talking about the pacing and everything, like just everything about this movie to me feel good. You know, it's just a movie that I would want to turn on any time when I want to feel good or I don't want to have to like think too hard. But yet it's not. It's not completely mindless either, so. Yeah, yeah, it's very sweet, happy ending, and one that I will I have it on DVD, and I will always have it on DVD. <laughs> Are you ready for Quizzy McGuire now, Natalie? I am. I'm nervous. So much pressure. <laughs> okay. So, Natalie, in 2009, Hillary guest starred on Law & Order SVU. What real-life murder suspect was her character based on? Oh my gosh, I don't know. I have seen it, but I don't know. So you'll have to fill me in. What is it? <laughs> so her character was based on Casey Anthony, actually. <gasps> oh, dark. Oh my gosh, how I did know. I know that? Yeah, and so so a little bit about the episode. It was Law & Order SVU, like I said. The episode was called Selfish. It premiered April 28th, 2009. And Hillary played a character named Ashley Walker, who was a young mother, uh, and she's suspected of killing her baby girl. I really don't want to spoil it, though. If people haven't seen it, they definitely should check it out because she is so good in the episode. Yeah, I'm going to have to go back and watch it now. That's so interesting. I was hoping you were going to say a Gossip Girl or something because I'm definitely familiar with that. Ooh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Her stint on Gossip Girl was wild. Oh, yes, it was. It was. Yeah, so my question for you, it's a little more recent, but I just wanted to test you. If Do you know what the name of her new FemCare product line that she is a part of is called? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I mean, I do, but like, oh, shoot. I'm, of course, blanking on it now. Nope. Go ahead and tell me what it's called. Here's a plug for her because that's what she's been plugging a lot. It's called Vita. I mean, of course, she's doing the diapers too, but I'm most excited about because I don't have any babies myself about the FemCare line. Right. It's... Uh, all natural products for women and I just think it's super cool and I just feel like she's such a relatable and like vulnerable woman and I love that she talks about womanhood and being a mom and being a female and has no shame about it and um, so I think just like being a female fan it's something that I'm like really paying attention to and just really love but yeah it's called Vita with two E's awesome get that promo in there for her I love it I know I'm like a brand ambassador hey all right well Natalie as we finish up here I mean is there anything else you want to say just about how much you love our girl HD and that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, obviously, as I said throughout this whole conversation we've been having, I've been a fan since the beginning. I have never stopped being a fan, even when she took like her long break, which I think was so necessary for her health and happiness and obviously worked in her favor. She came back stronger than ever. And I don't know, a reminder to just never give up on your dreams. And that's everything she taught me from the beginning. And, you know, no matter where our lives go or our paths take us, I think that the person she is and the projects and the things she stands for just keep reminding you to be vulnerable and to be real and to be kind and to just always believe in yourself. And that's what she's been doing for us since the beginning. So I'm grateful for her and for her staying on track and I wish her all the best and all her future success. Uh, you're going to make me like emotional. Oh, I know I get emotional too. <laughs> and I completely agree with everything you said. And I always like, when I was little, I would definitely think, oh, she was just this, you know, little girl in a small town who, like, went after her dreams and they happened. And really, she was from Houston, so it wasn't that small of a town. But still, it's right. it's about the same, you know. And I grew up in a really small town, so I just always felt like, oh, it's going to happen to me. Um, I know. So she's a huge role model and inspiration to me as well. So, Well, Natalie, this has been so fun. Yes, yes, it has. Great conversation. I've been wanting to talk to you for so long because I have been familiar with, <laughs> with who you are, too, because you're such a mega fan. So it's great to talk to you and to share Hillary love with somebody you know it's nice to have somebody to talk to about it absolutely well Natalie thanks so much for being on Deaf Enough oh of course thank you for having me 
And that's all for this episode of Duff Enough. Thanks again for listening. I hope you'll subscribe and stick around for more because this podcast is what dreams are made of. You can follow along on social media at Duff Enough Pod and check the description for my socials as well as show guests. And until next time, bye Team Duff. <laughs> <laughs>